I don't want to seem insensitive, but the, the friends of yours who are undergoing this distress, but I want to draw attention to something that you said. You said that their belief in Jesus, in their suffering, was their only hope. In other words, what you're saying, what you're asking me and others to believe, is that if Christianity is false, these people have no hope. Now, do you really mean that? Is it, would it be the case that if Christianity, by chance, was found to be just one of many other man-made faiths? I think a case for which I think can quite strongly be made that it isn't really that much different from all kinds of other religions that humans have invented for themselves. That we would therefore be condemned to utter despair. There'd be nothing to hope for, nothing to live for, nothing. This is a council of despair. Mm -hmm. It's one, it's, it's both a too uh, arrogant, it seems to me, too coercive in its implications, and also too abject, uh, too slavish. It seems to me to exhibit both those deformities. I'm not an admirer of C.S. Lewis, but I do think it was very brave of him to say I'm going here to the delusional point. Very brave of him to admit that if Jesus of Nazareth was not the Son of God, the incarnate Son, the Redeemer, if he wasn't that, then his doctrines, his teachings, were the ravings of an evil, mad person. Amen. Which you cannot say, as people like Thomas Jefferson and the Deists used to say, he wasn't divine, but he was a great moral preacher. No. These doctrines are immoral. They say, leave your family. Don't care about the morrow. Don't care about thrift or investment or your loved ones. Do give up everything. Follow me because the earth is coming. This veil of tears is coming to an end very soon. Um, and vicarious redemption is available. And you'll go to hell if you don't uh, do everything I say. And these, would be, these, would be, these would be delusional, idiotic. Ravings and Lewis was, was brave enough and honest enough for once in his writing career one to make this clear. One minute. Um, one minute. Okay, now I'll, I'll close on Douglas's question to me because it was a good challenge. He says, why, why do I care particularly about things like the Inquisition or the Crusades? I would add the Jihad. And so, why do I find these things more repulsive than others? I'll give you a simple answer. There's enough trouble um, from people who want to run my life, from people who want to tell me what to do, to take my property, to order me about, to tell me what books I can read, who I can sleep with and in what position, what food I can eat or not and on what day. There's a, enough coercion and threat and coercion without some other close con uh, relative of a chimpanzee, some other primate telling me that he's got the right to tell me these things because he's doing God's will. The initial emancipation, the first emancipation an intelligent human being has to be able to come up with is this. The beginning of freedom and liberty is to say, there isn't a human who can do that to you. There is no human who knows God's will. There's no human being who can appoint himself and say he's got God on his side and that's why he has the right to tell you what to do. This is the first and greatest of our emancipations. All others flow from it. Uh, you'll all feel very much better when you let go belief in the celestial uh, North Korea. Thanks.